Great, thanks. Okay, everybody right in here? I'll call this meeting to order and we need to adopt the agenda. Of Councilor Wells and Bruno move adoption of the agenda. Any questions? All those in favor, please raise your hand. That's carried. Any disclosures of interest on either of the planning applications? Okay. So this is a statutory public meeting. We have two applications this evening. And we are going to... The first application is public meeting report for proposed zoning bylaw amendment on Neff Street, file D14-08-21. The recommendation is that Planning and Development Department report 2021-119 be received for information. I'll now turn this over to Mr. Schultz to lead us through. David? Thank you and good evening, uh, Mayor Steele and members of Council and any members of the public that are tuning in on YouTube. Uh, this is for application D14-08-21 for, uh, as you mentioned, the zoning bylaw amendment on Neff Street. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen here before we get started. Okay, can everyone see that? Yes. Looking like yes, perfect. Okay. The purpose of this meeting is pursuant to Section 34 of the Planning Act and to consider an application submitted by the owner, Grandstone Living Inc., for the lands legally known as part of lots 2 and 4 on Plan 762 and parts 1 to 3 on Plan 59R 16500 in the City of Port Colburn, Regional Municipality of Niagara, municipally known as a vacant lot on the north side of Neff Street. The application for zoning bylaw amendment proposes to add the fourth density residential zoning to a property that's currently not zoned. Due to the irregular shape of the lot, the special provisions are being sought to reduce the front yard setback from nine meters uh, to seven meters and reduce the rear yard setback from six meters to three meters. The zoning bylaw amendment is being sought to permit the construction of a multi-unit residential building on the subject property. Notice of the public meeting was administered in accordance with Section 34 of the Planning Act as amended and Section 5 of Ontario Regulation 545-06. The notice of public meeting was circulated to required agencies and property owners within 120 meters of the property on March 29th, 2020. A public notice sign was also posted on the property by March 30th, 2021. Meeting details have been provided along with the council agenda on the city's website. As of the date of this meeting, staff has received the following comments um, from the Niagara Region Planning and Development uh, Division. Um, based on the phase one environmental site assessment submitted with the application, the region is requesting the submission of a phase two environmental site assessment in accordance with the Environmental Protection Act. Um, this request can be dealt with through a holding provision being put on the property or by delaying the council decision until the materials are submitted to the satisfaction of the region. Other than that, the region doesn't have any uh, objection to the proposal. Uh, the procedure to be followed this evening will be to present Department of Planning and Development Report 2021-119, hear any comments from the applicant, receive questions of clarification from council to the applicant or planning staff, open the meeting to the public for comments and questions, and announce the requirements under the Planning Act for written notice of passage of the proposed zoning bylaw amendment. At this time, Your Worship, I would like to present uh, Planning and Development Public 2021-119. Thank you, David. Go ahead. Thank you. The vacant property is located on the north side of Neff Street at the east limit of the street, um, as shown on this map here. The surrounding land uses are primarily commercial and low to medium density residential. The City of Port Colborne official plan designates the property as downtown commercial. Uh, this is in the blue and uh, light blue hatched area here. Lands in the downtown commercial designation include commercial uses, including retail shops, offices, and restaurants, residential uses, institutional uses, public and community uses, and parks. Residential uses are supported in the land use designation with the downtown commercial zone. Um, the land use designation is not proposed to be changed as a result of this application. 
Uh, the property is a unique example of a parcel in Port Colborne that was never assigned a zone. Up until 2019, the property ownership was held by CN Rail. The city's previous zoning bylaw, which was bylaw 1150-97-81, also had the property uh, without a zone on it. Uh, the property is no longer used for rail purposes, and it was de deemed surplus by CN and sold off uh, to the current owner. Um, the current owner has now requested the zoning to be changed to fourth density residential with special provisions to allow the development of a multi-unit residential building on the property. The R4 zone permits detached, semi-detached, triplex, fourplex dwellings, block and street townhouse dwellings, apartment buildings, public apartment buildings, and uses, structures, and buildings accessory thereto. As mentioned prior, uh, due to the irregular shape of the lot, Special provisions have been requested for the minimum front yard and rear yard setbacks, as well as the maximum parking area width. Uh, at this time, Your Worship, I would like to invite the applicant to comment if he uh, wishes. Thank you, David. Uh, Mark Valancourt is the proponent, and the deputy clerk will bring him in. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Yep. Go ahead. Hang out a little bit. I think I think we're good. Um, I think David covered it. Uh, covered every, pretty much everything there. Um, we're just looking to have this parcel zoned R four, so that we can. Uh, we're looking to build a biplex on it in the future, potentially right now. Um, and because of its odd shape, it's a lot wider than it is deep. Um, we're looking to sort of reduce the front and rear lot setbacks. Okay. And further then? We all set? Okay, to you. Yep. Perfect, thank you. Um, at this time, Your Worship, are there any questions of clarification uh, from Council to myself? Oh, Dave, can you stop sharing your screen so I can uh, see all of Council? Yes, sorry about that. Uh, Councillor Wells. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through you to uh, Dave. Uh, Dave, uh, on the information we get, we were provided, uh, I didn't see any parking spots. Are all the parking going to be on the road? No, the uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Wells. Um, the applicant has proposed to provide the parking on the site. Um, because of the, the shape of the lot and the location to the rail, um, there is a 15 meter rail setback from that uh, mutual property line. So in that spot, the applicant has proposed to put the parking um, for the triplex that he's looking to uh, construct. Councillor? Thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Bruno? Uh, thank you, Worship. Three to David. David, the last drawing there with the red box was that the uh, CN piece. The reason I'm a bit confused is, did the applicant not um, did the applicant tear down the small garage with the upstairs apartment to facilitate this new building, or is that still free and clear as a rear access to the old city hotel? David? Uh, three, if I, if I may uh, share my screen again. Yep, go ahead. Yep. That's okay. So through you to Councillor Bruno, um, as you would be aware from being on the Committee of Adjustment, the applicant did sever this portion, portion here where my mouse is, if you can see that. Yes. So that's directly east of the, or west of the parcel. Uh, that's where that, uh, that yes. residence was. And there is uh, currently a six unit apartment building proposed here um, by the same applicant that we have here tonight. Uh, very okay. good. Understanding. Uh, guys, Thank you, David. Uh, we just have to take a bit of a recess. We've had a glitch on our 
live feed. So just uh, hang on for a minute, please. Okay. Just working on it, guys. There's a as everybody hopefully knows today. Okay, Council, we think we've got the issue rectified. So welcome back, everyone. So Councillor Bruno was finished. I'm going to go to Councillor Claliff. Through you, Mr. Um, Chair, or Mr. Mayor. I just had a quick question for David. I wondered, um, I thought at some point I'd seen a picture regarding the orientation of the building on that property. Do we have that that we can have a peek at? David? you, Mr. Mayor. I, I can pull that up. If you can give me like two seconds, I can uh, pull that up and share my screen. 
Sure. Thank you. Okay, three, Mr. Mayor, uh, can you see that, Councillor Kapleila? Yes, I can. Thank you. Did you have any questions about the orientation of the building? So the proposed orientation is it's kind of a square coming off, and that's where we're asking for the decrease, right? At the rear of the building. Correct. Yeah. So if I I can zoom in here, um, I see. This mm -hmm. square is the proposed uh, triplex. Okay. I just wanted to verify. I remembered it, I had looked at it once before and I just wanted to refresh my memory on it. Councillor? And where and where does the is the parking located with this now? The parking would be in this will be over here in that line. Okay. So there would be it, when it, when it's related to parking, there's no no setbacks or anything from the rail track. The parking can be they can use the whole space for the parking. Is that how it works? Sure. Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, there are parking landscape buffer requirements for once you get above five spaces, but because there's only three spaces that would be required for a triplex, there aren't any uh, landscape provisions. Thank you. Thanks, other David. The, uh, other than the base, uh, twenty five percent landscaped area. Okay, thank you, thank Councillor. You, you uh, unshare your screen. Thanks, David. Any further questions from Council? Seeing none, David? Thank you. Uh, before opening the meeting to the public, I would like to read the following. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the city of Port Colborne before a decision on the proposed zoning bylaw amendment is passed by council, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the city of Port Colborne council to the local planning appeal tribunal. Further, if a person or public body does not make an oral submission at a public meeting or make written submission to the city of Port Colborne before a decision on the proposed zoning bylaw amendment is passed by council, the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the local planning appeal tribunal, unless in the opinion of the tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to do so. Uh, to any interested members of the public, if you would like to receive further notices regarding this application, um, you can contact myself at david.schultz at poorcolburn.ca or 905-835-2900 extension 202. Uh, or further, you could contact the clerk, uh, Amber Lapointe at amber.lapointe at portcolburn.ca or extension 106. I, I can leave that up on my screen for a second if for anyone that's uh, interested. Yep, that's perfect, David. So okay. in essence, with regards to oral presentations or questions from the public, we don't have anybody on for this portion of the meeting. The only delegation that we received was from the Niagara region, which you've already discussed. Um, so you can go to announcements if you want, David. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my final announcement, if you wish to be notified of the approval of the zoning bylaw amendment, you must make a written submission or written request to the clerk. Only those persons and public bodies like give the clerk a written request for the notice of the passing of a zoning bylaw amendment will be given notice. The proposed zoning bylaw amendment and recommendation report will return to council at a later date. Uh, this concludes my portion of the public meeting. I will now turn the meeting back to you, Mayor Steele, to the public portion of the meeting and receive the report for information. Great. Thank you, David. And thanks, Mr. Valancourt, for joining us this evening. Thank you, guys. So I'll have Councillors uh, uh, Bodner and Bagu move that the Planning and Development Report 2021-119 be received for information. Um, I don't think anybody has any further questions, I would assume. Seeing none, all those to receive, please raise a hand. That's carried.
Okay. And now we're on to item 4.2. Uh, this is a public meeting report of, for official plan and zoning bylaw amendment at Clally Street East and Welland Street and file D14-05-21 and the recommendation that will come at the end of the presentation is that Planning and Development Department Report 2021-120 be received for information. David, take it away. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen quickly again. Sorry about that. Okay. The purpose of this meeting is pursuant to sections 22 and 34 of the Planning Act and to consider an application initiated by the City of Port Colborne for their lands legally known as part of Lot 27 on Concession 2 and Part 1 on Plan 59R 1871 on the northwest northeast corner of Welland Street and Kalali Street East, formerly in the Township of Humberstone now in the city of Port Colborne, Regional Municipality of Niagara, municipally known as 72 Kalali Street East, uh, vacant land on the north side of Kalali Street East and city owned land on Welland Street. The application for official plan amendment proposes to change the official plan designation for these properties from urban residential to industrial slash employment area. Uh, further, the application for zoning bylaw amendment proposes to change the zoning from resi residential development or RD to light industrial or LI. Notice of the public meeting was administered in accordance with section 22 and 34 of the Planning Act as amended in Ontario regulations 543-06 and 545-06. Notice of the public meeting was circulated to required agencies and property owners within 120 meters of the land on March 29th, 2021. And meeting details have been provided along with the council agenda on the city's website. Uh, there was also a notice posted in the newspaper um, prior to March 29th, 2021. Uh, as of the date of this meeting, staff has received comments from the following members of the public and commenting agencies. Um, Mr. Jerry Tate is supportive of the proposal. Um, Melissa Bigford uh, objects to the proposal and uh, Melissa will be joining us uh, at the public portion of this meeting uh, when the floor is open. And we also received a letter from the surrounding uh, homeowners in that area. And I'll read that letter out to council here. To mayor and members of, to the mayor and members of council. We the people on Janet Street are writing to inform you of our concerns and questions regarding the official plan and zoning bylaw amendment at Clally East and Welland Street. Why is the city changing the zoning bylaw from RD to light industrial? Um, there's reasons they listed that they have concerns uh, for contamination of soil, uh, increase in noise in the area, increase in dust in the area, and increase in traffic. The area behind our homes has been zoned or RD for over 40 years. We do not believe that this proposal is in the best interest of the neighborhood and the community as a whole. That all the implications of the official plan and zoning bylaw amendment have been reflected. We do not think that this zoning bylaw amendment is compatible with the adjacent uses of land. And we think too many aspects are being left out and that we as homeowners in the surrounding area will, ref will feel the greatest effects of these shortcomings. It will also certainly lower the value of our homes. Uh, the letter was signed by Colette and Elaine Lacroix of 38 Janet Street, uh, Clazina and Odio Turchetti of 34 Janet Street, Fred and Donna Moreau of 33 Janet Street, Joe and Sharon Kovacs of 30 Janet Street, uh, Louis Cosma of 22 Janet Street, and Linda and Carmen Romano uh, of 231 West Side Road. Um, we also received comments from the drainage superintendent. Um, the drainage superintendent has no concerns with respect to municipal drains. However, future ditch maintenance on the east side of the parcel that's uh, subject to the rezoning and redesignation um, may require the use of the parcel along the city owned strip uh, on the east side of the lands. Um, from the Niagara region, uh, in principle, the region is supportive of the amendments. However, regional staff recommend the city utilize uh, site-specific provisions within the light industrial zone to minimize and mitigate any potential impacts on the adjacent residential area. Um, they recommend including uh, 
limiting the permitted uses to class one industry to ensure the 20 meter minimum separation distance can be achieved. Uh, based on the review of the light industrial zone provisions, regional staff recommend removing the permission for a contractor's yard and motor vehicle repair garage, both of which would generate offsite noise and or dust impacts. Um, the region also recommends to increase the minimum inter interior side yard uh, setback abutting a residential zone provision to 20 meters, which is in line with the minimum, minimum separation distance recommended by the D6 guidelines. Um, and also prohibiting outdoor storage within that minimum interior side yard abutting a residential zone to ensure the setback is maintained for all aspects of the use, not just the buildings. And uh, for to require the parking area in the interior side yard abutting a residential zone to also be paved with concrete or asphalt to minimize any dust impacts. Finally, the regional staff recommend that the city consider including a holding provision on these lands to require the submission of a stage one or two archaeological assessment for any areas of the property that are not already disturbed by existing development. Alternatively, this could be dealt with through uh, planning app act approvals uh, later on, such as site plan control, uh, which will be required for this development. The procedure to be followed this evening will be to present uh, planning and development report 2021-120. Uh, Hear any comments from the applicant, uh, which is the city. And uh, I believe uh, Mr. Fontaine is also on the call here. Uh, receive questions of clarification from council to the applicant or planning staff. Open the meeting to the public for comments and questions and announce the requirements under the Planning Act for written notice of adoption and passage of the the proposed official plan and zoning bylaw amendments. At this time, I would like to present Planning and Development Public Hearing Report 2021-120. Uh, the subject lands are located on the northeast corner of Welland Street and Kalali Street East. The surrounding land uses are primarily low density residential to the east and institutional to the north. Uh, there's also the Welland Canal on the, uh, the west side uh, towards uh, yeah, on the west side. The city of Port Colborne official plan designates the property as urban residential. Land uses in the urban residential designation include residential, neighborhood commercial, and community facilities and institutional uses. The official plan amendment proposes to redesignate the lands from urban residential to industrial slash employment. The land uses in the industrial slash employment designation shall be shall include but not be limited to manufacturing and fabricating, assembling, processing, servicing and repairing, warehousing and storage, shipping and receiving, offices as an accessory or secondary use, commercial activities that provide amenities to employ employees during the workday uh, as an accessory use, cannabis production facilities, industrial activities related and proximate to the canal and harbor area such as ship dockage and repair and accessory uses such as parking garages. The subject properties are zoned residential development in the city's of, uh, zoning bylaw. The RD zone permits a detached dwelling and uses structures and buildings accessory there too. The zoning bylaw amendment proposes to change the zoning from residential development to light industrial. The light industrial zone permits the following uses. Um, adult oriented entertainment establishment, cannabis production facility, car wash, contractor's yard, crematorium, education facility, industry light, motor vehicle repair garage, public use, research facility, transportation depot, and uses structures and buildings accessory there too, uh, but does not include obnoxious or dangerous or offensive trade, trades. At this time, Your Worship, are there any questions of clarification for myself? Okay, if you could unshare your screen. Council, any questions at this point? Uh, Council Bruno. Thank you, Worship, through you to um, our planner, David. Um, when you um, read out the comments from the region, was there a recommendation to um, uh, constrict those light industrial uses that are in our uh, OP, as you've read out, to a more restrictive? And if that was the case, could you repeat what it was? 
Was it just warehousing? David? Through you, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Bruno. So the ones that I read out were um, what is, has, has been proposed to be changed uh, prior to the region's comments. So they are looking to further tailor that to strictly, um, I believe the class one industry that they're referring to limits outdoor storage um, and contractors yards uh, and things like that. So really they're, they're trying to limit the, uh, any land use compatibility impacts with uh, future operations that could hypothetically uh, be established. Councilor. Thank you, David. Uh, That's fine, Mr. Mayor, thanks. Good, thank you. Councilor Bagger. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I got a few questions. Just to follow up on Councilor Bruno, the region does not recommend a motor vehicle uh, repair shop, but well, you your list includes it. So I'm just a little confused on who gets it, us or the region, who has it right. David, do you want to explain that? Through you, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Bagu. The application as I presented it was prior to um, the region's comments. So the region's comments came in today. Um, the application as, as initiated by the city was to rezone the property from light or uh, residential development to light industrial, which does permit all those uses. Their comments came in to further tailor those uses after the fact. Councilor? Uh, thank you, Mr. Schultz. Uh, my next question, Mr. Mayor, since the city is being the applicant, is the city not required to put the signage up regarding the notice for a public meeting as in other private people that put an application for rezoning? Like I, I just noticed there's no signs on the property at all. So I'm just wondering, is the city exempt or Mr. Fontaine exempt? Mr. Schultz? Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, to Councillor Bagu. When the city notifies through the newspaper, they do not actually have to post signs on the property under the Planning Act. Um, we did uh, issue further notices to property owners nearby um, just because we felt that was the right thing to do. Um, but with, with the newspaper notice, we do not have to post signs on the properties um, because it's, it's a general area for the most part. Councilor? Uh, thank you, Mr. Bear. I, I learned something from Mr. Schultz today. Uh, the one question I have, uh, the region did not have a pre-consultant meeting, pre-consultation meeting regarding this, as in the other Neff Street, they had one, and they mentioned potential soil contamination. Like, if this site has potential soil contamination, how would that roll into this changing of the, uh, the, the applicant? Schultz? Or is that not an issue going from residential to industrial? Three, Mr. Mayor, uh, typically when you're switching from residential to industrial, there wouldn't be any requirements for any environmental studies because the land would be getting contaminated hypothetically uh, with an industrial use more than it would be with a residential use. Uh, for example, if you were switching from light industrial to residential development, that change of use would trigger the need for the environmental uh, studies to ensure the land is suitable for residential use. Councillor? So if the land is potentially brownfield right now, it's okay to put a, they have to get to put a warehousing and everything else in there because uh, it doesn't have to be tested, right? David? Through you, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Baggy, that's correct. Um, industrial uses don't, uh, typically require remediation uh, in order to be established when they're switching from a less sensitive use to a, uh, no, sorry, more sensitive use to a less sensitive use. Councilor? Okay, uh, thank you. Um, one last question. In uh, part B of the amendment, it states that lines shown on Schedule A are redesignated from parks and open space to industrial areas. What threw me is, the words parks in open space. Do we have parks in open space here? I thought it was all already zoned residential. David? Three, Mr. Mayor, uh, that may have been a typo. I apologize for that. 
um, that that uh, notice should have said uh, urban residential uh, switching to um, industrial slash employment. Okay, okay Mr. Mary, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Borgard. Through your worship to David, so the current um, owner of that property currently has a legal non-conforming use, correct? David? Through you, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Beauregard, that's correct, yes. Okay, okay, so I just have, my question is about if they have a legal non-conforming use, could they not just alter or extend or enlarge their legal non-conforming use? Why are we going through this process? David? Through you, Mr. Mayor, there are policies that do permit the expansion of a legal non-conforming use in our official plan. Unfortunately, those policies are quite restrictive in that the establishment or enlargement of that legal non-conforming use has to be reasonable and not, for example, uh, the proposal that from what I've been hearing from Mr. Fontaine and uh, our economic development team is that the expansion would be quite large. Um, so that expansion of the legal non-conforming use policy is to is to allow the expansion in a reasonable manner. Um, in my opinion, as a planner, I I didn't think that would be an option because uh, it was such so large of a uh, an expansion. Councillor. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councillor Clayla. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to David. Um, you said that this this property had already been redesignated in the 80s. Prior to that, it had been light light industrial and it moved into residential, right? David? So through you, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Kalalif, there is a bit of a history on this property with um, the changing in designations, I would say. Um, so 1982 was when our, our first uh, official zoning bylaw was passed. Uh, that was 115097-81. Um, so that designated the properties. Um, actually, maybe I can share my screen. That probably would. Uh, yep, go ahead. Okay. So um, these, these parcels here, the ones that are uh, leaving this one aside, these this parcel here, which is the city-owned parcel, and uh, this RD parcel, was in 1982 when our zoning bylaw passed uh, residential. Um, so I guess it has been residential for, for quite a long time. This uh, parcel, which the existing Fontaine facility is located in now, um, that was light industrial up until the passing of our current zoning bylaw in 2018, uh, 65, 75, 30, 18. Um, so that is when that property reverted back to the residential um, uh, land use because it had to match the official plan that was passed in 2013. Does that answer your question? So that went to residential in 2018 is when it went back from what it from the light industrial. It, it flipped back into resident. So it's only been residential for three years. That particular piece on the corner, Fontaine's. Okay, that's it. Thank that's you. Correct. Yep. Thank you, Councillor. And just for those accounts that may not know, the city-owned portion that David showed you and the portion of the RD was exit chemical at one time. Uh, it was a fairly large chemical plant that sat there, just so people do know that. Councillor Demeray. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you, I do have a few questions, but um, first, I, I haven't actually heard from any of the uh, residents that would be affected by, by these changes, but I am pleased to see that they, they have submitted their comments. Um, I, I really was pleased to see the Niagara Regional co comments, and I do believe that we should put those restrictions into play here. Um, that is probably the very best way to allow the residents not to be heavily impacted by some changes. So I, I, I would like to see those restrictions put forward. Um, as to the exit chemical spot uh, lot, that would be the city owned piece, that it was ever re uh, zone residential is amazing, but um, with the changes going to light industrial, 
um, that would be best fit that property. So I would have no issue there. The only issue I do have is with the large privately owned piece and making sure that whatever activities occur there, they are going to uh, leave the residents with very little impact. So I'd be interested to hear what's going to happen uh, for, for the residents there. That's everything I have to say. Great, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Bruno. Thank you, Worship. Uh, Councillor um, Demery's comments just segues perfectly into the question I had. Further to the region's restricted suggestions, once we hear from Mr. Fontaine as to what the look, shape, size, use of what he wants to do there, can we come back to you within the confines of this meeting and perhaps even be restricting the region's comments even tighter um, uh, David. David? For you, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Bruno, um, you as a council do have that ability to uh, tailor the amendment uh, further than the region's recommendations. I would caution that uh, if you tailor it too much or restrict too much, then uh, the application could be appealed um, to the LPAT uh, and, and there could be a, a battle going on with that. So. I'll just leave it there, but you do have that ability as the council to uh, make that decision. Thank you, David. Okay, any further questions from councillors? Great, thank you. David, next. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, before opening the meeting to the public, I would like to read the following. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the city of Port Colborne before a decision on the proposed official plan and zoning bylaw amendments are passed by council, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the city of Port Colborne council to the local planning appeal tribunal. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the city of Port Colborne before a decision on the proposed zoning official plan and zoning bylaw amendments are passed by council, the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the local planning appeal tribunal, unless in the opinion of the tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to do so. I'm just gonna share my screen one last time here. Everyone can see that, is that correct? Not yet. Not yet. Oh, sorry. There we go. Perfect. Thank you, okay. Bill. To any interested members of the public that are tuning in, if you would like to receive future notices regarding this application, please contact me by email at david.schultz at portcolburn.ca or by phone at 905-835-2900 extension 202 or otherwise you can contact the city clerk at amber.lapointe at portcolburn.ca. I have it up on the screen here. I can leave it up, up there for a few seconds uh, just so everyone can uh, write down the information if they need to. At this time, Your Worship, I would like to invite any members of the public who wish to speak to the applications to do so. Great. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. We have one delegation this evening. It's Larry and Barb Fontaine. Welcome. Good evening, can you hear me? Yep, we've got you. Thank you, Larry. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, councillors, uh, staff, and members of the public. As mentioned, my name is Larry Fontaine Jr. and I am the president of Fontaine Transport Inc. The expansion would involve a new up to 50,000 square foot building, which would be used for warehousing. The building would be located on the south east corner of the property the back of the building would be parallel to Janet Street. The truck entrance that exists currently off of Kalali Street would be moved closer to the existing building on the southwest corner of the property. Um, as it stands now, there are approximately six homes on Janet Street that see parked trailers or parked transport trailers when looking out their backyards. With the addition, they would now be looking at a building. The plans for the new building 
would have a setback. And again, dealing with the city on however we can make this work for the neighbors, but the original plans would have a 25 foot setback from the easterly property, property line. In addition to the existing city land, there would be approximately 60 feet of space from the building to the home's backyard. The building would now act as a buffer for the trucks coming in and out and as such eliminate any dust issues and minimize truck noise as it stands now. Uh, the expansion would create additional truck traffic of approximately five more trucks per day. The operation hours would remain the same as it is today. Uh, we do not have any night shifts and we do not operate on the weekends. And the building itself, the height would be approximately 41 feet high and constructed primarily of steel clad. Loading docks would be on the west side of the building, therefore not in the view of the homes on Janet Street. There will be no manufacturing in the building and it will be used strictly for warehousing purposes. Uh, there would be one to two forklifts operating throughout the day in the building. Originally, and I, I learned something new today, I was under the impression all of the property was industrial at one point in time. Um, and prior to 1980, I'm not too sure. Certainly the corner that I'm at um, was industrial, um, but I was under the impression it was all industrial at one point in time. But um, irregardless, um, the property, I would have to agree that it's approximately 10 acres in total is a good location to build new homes or apartments. And in normal circumstances, the value of the land would be worth more as residential than it would be as light industrial. The fact of the matter is, however, we did environmental testing on the lands. And as the results of the testing, they do not support a residential development as the cost for the cleanup overpower the value of the land. It would appear that the area in, in its day was used as backfill during construction of the Welland Canal. Among other things, the fill includes asphalt, concrete, and a lot of rock that is not native to the site. And um, as Mr. Schultz explained, the use for residential is much more sensitive than industrial, so it would require a complete uh, cleanup if it was to go residential and uh, which just the cost is just, the value does not bear the cost and uh, that's why it's probably never been developed as such. However, the contamination is not to a degree that it's harmful to the neighborhood because it's much more of a backfill type thing and it can be used for light industrial. Um, So well, basically in conclusion, I would ask council to support the zoning change and allow Fontaine to build on the property. I am aware of site plan control and would look forward to dealing with the city staff to help ensure that all necessary steps are taken for the quiet enjoyment of the neighbors. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fontaine. Uh, questions to the delegate, any questions? Councilor Bruno. Thank you, Worship. Uh, through you to Mr. Fontaine. So if I understand this, would, the, would then the, um, the facing side to Janet Street would be similar to the back of the Valley Center or Costco or something like that? Mr. Fontaine? Is that correct? Yes, I think that would be a good analogy there. That it would be very similar to that. Um, through you to Mr. Fontaine, would there, would the length of that building mirror your current operations to the extent that you talked about the trucking would be now on the west side, there'd be no loading dock or doors on the um, Janet Street side. But what about the current view to your existing 
business. So with the limestone building the, the warehouse, would, would that now um, be um, blocked from view from Janet Street, backyards? Yes, the neighbors there would no longer see our existing building as the new building would be uh, would be covering it. So the entrance would be between the two buildings. Um, first plans would show ideally better if the building was attached to our existing building. However, that would force the driveway, the entrance, the truck and just closer to the homes on Janet Street. But I think it's more feasible for the neighbors if we get the driveway between uh, the building. So long answer, yes, they would no longer see the limestone building from their backyards as the building would be covering it. Councillor? Thank you. Thank you. And finally, um, while we can't presume what a site plan agreement would be, would you have any objection to um, trees being planted in that 25 foot setback and even further um, shielding um, residents' backyard from the view of, of just a blank wall, which I guess is a sound barrier, but also, you know, probably fairly boring looking? Mr. Fonte? There would be no objection to that. In fact, we had planned for doing uh, such a thing in our budget uh, anyhow. Thank you, Mr. Fonte. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Kalel. Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, to Mr. Fontaine, could I just ask you, if we were to support the regional recommendations, would that deter, deter your development? Is it, does it impact you in any way for moving forward on this? Mr. Fontaine? The, the part that I don't understand too much is when he mentioned the archaeological uh, testing. That I'm unfamiliar with. Um, so I'm not too sure what that entails, but if that was an extensive uh, number or a delay, then yeah, that could hamper things. Mr. Schultz, can you um, maybe give some clarification to the counselor's question? Because I know this just came in today, so I'm sure Mr. Fontaine hasn't had a lot of time to digest that. Uh, uh, to answer that question, I they, the region did say that the archaeological assessment may be required uh, down the road through the site plan application. Um, I know in past experience with archaeological assessments, if there's evidence that the land has been disturbed uh, heavily since, uh, I, I, I'm not sure the exact time, um, but if you can provide that evidence to the region, they, they're usually uh, pretty supportive of waiving that requirement because uh, any archaeological resources that may or may not have been there uh, would have likely already been damaged or destroyed back then. Um, and you mentioned that uh, the land was was potentially used for fill in the past. And I know uh, in, in past meetings, I believe you had a picture of uh, the old factory that was there prior to uh, just the Fontaine and uh, when the exit chemical was there. Um, so all of that can be used as uh, justification for not requiring um, an archaeological assessment. Great. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Councillor Kalela. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, to David. Would you happen to have, again, a, a diagram that could show us with this new orientation where there's the where the driveway is going to go between the two buildings? I'm just thinking the public would probably like to see that. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, that I don't have. Uh, we have not received any, uh, like, formal formal plans yet. Okay. Uh, Nothing conceptual. You have, don't have anything? No, unfortunately not. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any further questions? Any further comments, Mr. Fontaine? You're all set? No, I think I'm good, thank you. Great, thank you, Larry. Seeing no further questions, David, next. Are there any other um, members of the public on the call, Mr. Mayor? Uh, no, no, that's no. Uh, Mr. Fontaine's the only one. The other delegations were all by letter. Okay. Um, 
I will note that um, Melissa Bigford was uh, planning to be in attendance, but um, she did submit her comments to council. So you should have all seen that letter. Um, I'm not sure if the deputy clerk or clerk can clarify that uh, council has circulated that as well. Yes, um, it's, in our, it's in our package, uh, David. I just want to make sure that those were uh, uh, considered by council. Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, my final message here. Uh, if you wish to be notified of the approval of the official plan and zoning bylaw amendment, you must make a written request to the clerk. Only those persons and public bodies that give the clerk a written request for the notice of the adoption and passing of an official plan and zoning bylaw amendment will be given notice. Um, the same number would be uh, the number to call. So uh, 905-835-2900 extension 202, or I can be reached by email at david.schultz S-C-H-U-L-Z at portcolburn.ca. Um, the proposed official plan and zoning bylaw amendment, uh, along with the recommendation report, will return to council in the near future. That concludes my portion of the public meeting. I will now turn the meeting back to you, Mayor Steele, to close the public portion of the meeting and receive the report for information. Great. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. So Thank you. The recommendations that planning and development department report 2021-120 be received for information of councillors Demery and Beauregard move that. Uh, assume there are no more questions. All those in favor of receiving, please raise your hand. Opposed, that's carried. Thank you, council. We have no procedural motions. We have no information items. I will now move this. Oh. Oh. Uh, certainly, yes, we will. Uh, Council, uh, Melissa Bickford has now joined us, um, so we'll allow her to speak, and then uh, you can ask questions if that's okay with Council. Everybody okay with that? You want to get her in? Oh, she not in? Okay. Seems like we may have lost her. Council, take a five minute recess. Uh, Deputy Clerk's trying to get Melissa on. So we'll come back in five minutes, which is uh, 7.39.
Melissa, welcome. Sorry, I apparently am still learning this stuff and went to the wrong link on the email. Ah, uh, okay. So go ahead. We've we've actually okay. Concluded, um, we've concluded, but can go you ahead, and you'll take questions from uh, council too. Okay, we're good. Yep, go ahead. Um, my name is Melissa Bigford, and I'm here to speak to you tonight on behalf of myself and my mother, Mary Bigford, who resides at 147 College Street East. Um, I had sent my letter, but I've got some other things that I wanted kind of to address um, that we are not in favor in the change in distinction, um, as it has been uh, zoned urban residential for 40 years, and I, I'm, you know, Having heard that it is contaminated, I felt that in new residential neighborhood housing development continues to be a need in Port Coburn and new homes will be compatible with the existing zoning and the surrounding settlement area. Um, what would prevent the owner from severing off a parcel of the land once it's newly zoned? I am still concerned about that, what will happen to the accessibility and maintenance of the city maintained digits, or ditches sorry, that border the Janet Street properties. Why does the city want to change the long-standing zoning of the Welland Street parcel of land? Does the city intend to sell the Welland Street parcel of land? I also thought it was of interest today since nothing has been decided yet they were workers drilling holes into the city portion of the land um, today and there's at least four quite deep holes dug on that portion. Um, I would also like to bring attention to the fact that many of the abutting neighbors in the surrounding community are older and do not have access to computers or are able to navigate a virtual public meeting. I had some of the neighbors contact me who are in their 90s who are concerned about what will be put into the northern section of the property because of the distinctions that can be um, placed under light industrial. And it has been, and always under my understanding has been zone residential development aside from the city portion and the existing Fontaines, which is the non-conforming, but was light industrial until it was changed in 2018. Um, I would continue to stress and claim that council needs to somehow work with the public more and if they're gonna to continue to hold public meetings during a pandemic, as they're to engage a wider audience and in information sharing and discussion and intended to attract a full range of stakeholders in the community, many of whom are, were unable to address their concerns because of their age or inability um, and comfort. Um, I'd also like to stress that after reading the report from region and if council does decide to go ahead with the zoning amendments that council limit the zoning, the extent of the zoning parcel to the southern area and also that council direct staff to notify the neighbors of and when the site plan amendments come to council. I know that has to be a vote that is directed to staff from council and I believe the neighbors would like to have say if this is going to proceed on the site plan um, amendments. Also in the past, upon council approval, council has allowed members of the public who spoke at the public meeting to speak to the report when it comes back to council. And I am curious to know if will council continue to allow this? Because a lot of times now, when the report comes back to council, there's more information that is not necessarily presented at the public meetings, especially since staff um, don't tend to give their recommendations until all the information is presented. Um, and in conclusion, uh, I, I still have a lot of issues with the fact that it's been long-standing residential and the whole area around here, there is no light industrial until, or even it's not to hit the heavy industrial by the Clarence Street Bridge and the Welland Avenue. And then the only other high industrial is the previous uh, Algoma Corporation, which had site plan restrictions that made it with, that it was only allowed to be a metal sh um, machine shop. Aside from that, the neighborhood is and surrounding, it's all residential. So this building will be quite large um, from the description of the applicant. And for the most part, my mother feels that they have been an uneventful neighbors, but will that continue with the proposed expansion? 
um, because that building will be quite large and it will be abutting Kalali Street and will affect um, the neighbors that live along here as well. Thank you. Great, thank you, Melissa. Any questions from council? Uh, Councilor Clayla. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Melissa. Could I ask you, Melissa, have you had the opportunity to see um, the recommendations of the region that came through today? Yes. Um, and I guess um, I liked it because some of them were what I had say, suggested in my letter with the guidelines of the D6 compatibility. Um, I think the question is, as long as like class one industry and that it maintains that because we do not know what is stored in the warehouses um, and whether or not there is a potential risk if something happens, especially with the large expansion. Um, and then the insurance of right now it is all stone based in the driveway. Um, so will the dust, if they, will the controls be placed in site plan amendment, which is why I've, stated about the neighbors being because it's not a mandatory um thing that they are involved or aware of when the site plan um controls are placed and and again melissa i don't know if you were you, did you have the opportunity were you listening to mr fontaine when he spoke tonight yes I don't know. so you know that he's he has said that they would plan to put in landscaping and trees and different things that would help as well and I thought I had read in this report as well that they were going to put either concrete or asphalt down as well for this over some of this property to control the dust. So if all of those things happened, the, everything that you know has been kind of outlined and we were to support the regional recommendations, do you think that that for the most part would satisfy the citizens or do you think that there's more that you're looking for? I think my concern would still be the northern section of the property, which where would does that mean all the transport trucks will be parked further along to those neighbors like further than the so you'd be kind of hidden 42 to f i think it's 56 um that uh that section that also the previous owner have i've had to speak to with the city about maintaining it because of ticks and stuff of the grass cutting so i guess it's a question of what is the Purpose, what will they do with that section? Is that where they're going to now power up the trucks further down so that the lower neighbors have a big storage facility, but the further now neighbors now get all the transport trucks? Councillor? Fair enough. I, that sounds, that's a fair question. I know Mr. Fontaine did say that it would only be an increase of five trucks per day. Um, they do not work on the weekends or in the, in the evenings. Um, he didn't have a lot of, he wasn't, adverse to the recommendations put out by the region. That's why I was wondering, you know, if we can find a middle ground here that would satisfy residents. If, if you know, you had, uh, were assured of the, the different things being put in there for the noise control. I think that the location of the building, the way that they've, I haven't seen how it's going to be located on the property, but from what he's saying, I think they are trying to, to keep to the trucks to the west side of the, of the property so that wouldn't affect people on Janet Street, which it would be better as well, I think. Right, but it would affect, I guess, the neighbors and my mother that live on Kalali. On Street. Kalali Street. Okay, all right. I just wanted to know what you thought about, about um, what the, the region had recommended. That's good to know, thank you. I'm glad, I was very happy to see the region's um, recommendations um, because I had left some of the stuff out that I had found in my report and a lot of what it was is that. And I guess the other question is, what is the city's intent of their parcel of land? Because then could there be future buildings or stuff put on that land that is currently owned by the city? That is the north section on Welland it's contaminated. that apparently had the yeah. access chemicals that was contaminated. Okay, I don't have the answer for that one, but I like you, was, I was very pleased when I saw the recommendations of the region. So. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Bruno. Thank you, Worship. I like Melissa's last question with respect to the old exit uh, chemical plant owned by the city. Um, that would 
three to Mr. Schultz. Would that have to come forward um, separately um, for a similar type meeting? I don't know that this, not that I've heard the city has any intention yet for that land, but we would um, have to, I presume, do the same as here or as a, a public meeting or as a city. Um, I don't believe that's exempted, but I'd like some clarification on that. Mr. Schultz? Through Mr. Mayor to uh, Councillor Bruno. Um, that property is actually included in this amendment as well uh, to change from residential to uh, industrial. Um, so I'm, I, I don't think there would be a further meeting for a zoning change or official plan change, um, but because it's city owned, there would, I, I'm assuming I'm not an expert in land sales from the city, but I would believe that there's a, a council meeting that would be held for uh, selling that parcel to uh, whoever uh, would like to buy it in the future. Uh, maybe uh, perhaps uh, Scott uh, can jump in there. No, you can, you can jump in. I'll... All right. Uh, through your worship to council. Um, yeah, the city has a land disposal policy. Any kind of a sale of land has to go through that policy. There's typically you know, two types of land sales that I can think of. Um, one is where it's unsolicited and a person comes to us and says, I know that the city is the owner of this piece of land and I would like to buy it off of the city. The second is where we're actively marketing a parcel and that's uh, less common, but it does happen from time to time where the city has land that it doesn't want to be the owner of and we try to sell it. Um, in either case, they're both treated the same. If it is a marketable, if it is a marketable piece of land, it's a public sale that everyone has an opportunity to bid on. This is different than unmarketable or, or sort of less marketable properties. And think of that. An example of that would be somebody who needs a few feet of side yard or rear yard to square off their property, and they're the only person who could buy the land. So because this is presumably industrial or residential, depending on the future of the zoning bylaw amendment, uh, land that's of a size that's buildable and is on a major municipal street, I would consider it to be marketable, and that would be a fully public process. Um, we do uh, entertain bids or uh, offers to purchase in closed session. Uh, that's where council first negotiates the price back and forth with the prospective purchaser, but it always, always, always comes to open session before it is disposed of. So there are no backroom deals, there are no land sales that don't end up in the council chambers and in a public meeting, whether that's in person or on Zoom. Thank you, Mr. CAO. Mr. Uh, Councillor Bruno? That's fine, thank you. Good, thank you. Great, thank you, Melissa. Or sorry, uh, Councillor Demeray. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you, Ashley, uh, this may also go to Scott. Um, Scott, considering this is city-owned land and we have good reason to believe that it's reasonably contaminated, um, is the city bound to clean that land up before it can be sold or can we sell it in the state that it's in? CAO? So through your worship to Councillor Demeray, that's a good question. Um, I think that the best way to sort of answer that question is to refer back to what Mr. Schultz said about uh, intensifying uses or, or more sensitive, progressively more sensitive uses of vacant land or even a built building. So in most cases, the Ministry of the Environment, or in every case, as a proposed new use becomes, um, becomes more sensitive. So for example, going from industrial to commercial or from commercial to residential, a record of site condition is required. And that's an environmental certification that the parcel of land can be used for the, that more sensitive use. So, and this is my roundabout way of coming back to your question to say, you can sell anything in any condition that's going to have a bearing on the purchase price, I'm sure. So for example, sometimes you hear about somebody buying a parcel of land for a dollar. Usually the reason for that nominal amount is because there's some kind of uh, a, a condition 
that makes the property not worth the full market value, which could be environmental contamination. Um, so there's not an obligation to sell it clean. There is an op obligation to disclose if it's known to be not clean. Um, but you could also, and it would be council's option, remediate a property from a brownfield to a remediated condition and then sell it for a, what, what I would presume would be a higher value, which is the value of the remediated land. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. That helps for that part. I do have one, one other part to the questions. Um, if this council were to decide that that specific piece of land um, would be limited in its use for the future, would that decision bind future councils or could that decision be reversed? So, yeah. Sure. So your worship to Councillor Demery, that's a great question. I would suggest that, you know, other than unless a sale has taken place or staff direction has been given to undertake a sale, that future councils could always reverse that decision. Not much different than the zoning, the rezoning decision. If an applicant came forward, a re, another, some subsequent rezoning in the future could take place. So I don't think there's a way that you can lock down a parcel for future generations or iterations of council. And I think the short answer is no, you can't bind next council. Okay, well, thank you, Scott. That is exactly what I was looking for. That, that's all my questions. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Melissa. Appreciate it. So, Council, this has been voted on, but uh, because Melissa was having issues uh, getting on to the Zoom uh, this evening, so we allowed her to uh, come forward. So we are going to go on to the next portion of the meeting, uh, which were procedural motions. There are none. There are no information items. So at this point, uh, before we go into our uh, council meeting, I'll adjourn this portion of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Oh, thank you, David. Take okay, care. council, I'll have uh, councillors Demery and Kaleloff move that council now proceed into closed session in order to address the following matters. Item 20.1, the minutes of the closed session portion of the March 22nd, 2021 council meeting. Item 20.2, Chief Administrative Office Report 2021-86. Item 20.3, Chief Administrative Office Report 2021-99. And 20.4, Chief Administrative Office Report 2021-98. All pursuant to the Municipal Act 2001, subsections 239-2C, a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board. All in favor of moving into closed session, please raise your hand. That's carried. Oh, and then we also have a bylaw when we come out of open session. It's uh, bylaw 4.1, which is bylaw to adopt, ratify, and confer the proceedings of the Council of the Corporation of the City of Port Coleman. We can pass that right now? Okay. I'll have Councillors uh, Bodner and Councillors Bruno move the bylaw, item 4.1. All those in favor? That's carried. Disclosures of interest? Seeing none. Okay, Council, we'll reconvene in our other Zoom invite. Thank you.